Hi guys, my name is Anastasia and today we will see a really interesting TV show My 600 LB Weight. So I will watch this video with you together, speak my mind and maybe even philosophize a little. But guys, I immediately apologize in advance that every 3 seconds my screen will flash because YouTube doesn't skip this video in a different way. But I really hope for your support and understanding and I will be really very grateful for your likes and I will read all your comments with pleasure. So let's do it. Let's start. How I'm passing on how I eat to Josh. I can't live with myself oh, if he eats like portion. Me. Somewhere in me is this little glimmer of hope. I just oh, want to be a normal person. Jesus. Jesus. You can't do it. And then I just get mad. If I don't make a change now, I'm scared. It's going to be too late. No! Do we roar? I refuse to stop fighting. I have to do this for my children. Crystals. I don't know how I'm going to do this without you. You can do it. You're going to be fine. The obesity destruct your garments. For 34 years. How big she is. It is his hand on her stomach. Yeah. My name is Crystal Hall and I am thirty four years old. And I feel like I've destroyed my life by letting my weight get as out of control as it is now because I'm 600 pounds and I'm miserable. Every aspect of my life is affected by my size to where I have to have help to do a lot now. Take a shower. Uh, shower. My husband Freeland is the one I rely on to help me get up and through my day. But I hate making him do that because I know it's hard for him. You're right behind you. I'm gonna put my medicine first. Uh, but my body is in such bad shape now. And I have all these medical conditions making everything worse for me. You know, first it started with things like joint pain and it's been hard to breathe when I do too much. But now I have all these other issues. Yeah, give me a shot. But since she is in this project, she decided to change her life, and for her, it's really good. I am a diabetic now that takes insulin. I have high blood pressure. I have major stomach issues. Mm. Parts of my stomach have nerve damage from all the years basically of abuse. And I swell on my legs and feet, so there's some days I can't really walk very well. So I'm stuck to where my body just can't handle much now. Alright, gotta get ready and get in the shower. She uh, has tattoos. I'll be in behind you. Oh, 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 And it's horrible to have to ask your husband slowly over the past couple years to go from your husband, your partner, to now I've turned him into my caregiver instead of my husband. And I'm angry at myself for letting that happen. But I can't even get to the bathroom without getting exhausted. So getting undressed and getting in the shower, it's pain nonstop to bend, to move. I'm out of breath. My legs will start shaking. I don't shower as often as I should, and because of the pain. I shower once every three or four days.
Guys, sorry, but without manicure on her arms, I really don't think she is a woman. And that's horrible for a person my size because we get skin breakdown, we can get rashes and stuff like that. I try to take care of myself in between the days, you know, kind of like sponge bathing or whatever, but it doesn't, it's not as good as a shower. Hey, babe. Yeah. Can you wash my legs? Yeah. Crystal has quite a few problems. I feel bad for her. I mean, I understand that she's hurting, and I definitely have to do a lot to help her. So in a lot of ways, I do feel more like her caretaker than her husband. But I love her, so I do it. Edgar, hey, give me another towel. I don't know what I'd be able to do without Freeland. I just know things would be a lot worse if I didn't have him. But as much as I... I really don't understand how she can do her body like this now. What happened with her? What about portion control? I dread the whole process of the shower. My least favorite part of getting ready in the morning is when I have to do anything in front of the mirror. I don't want to see my reflection because I hate my body. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh... And I hate looking at myself in the mirror. It makes me just sick. But I have to, because part of my routine is I have to shave because I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it causes hair growth in random places on your body. And for me, that's on my face. That's honestly embarrassing, but that's what I do when I get out of the shower is dry off, go to the sink, shave my face. But I do not like my husband to see it. He's never watched me shave my face before, and he's never helped me shave my face, even when I've been very sick. Because it's already hard enough for me to do on my own, without any concern of what he thinks, because when I have to shave my face, I feel so disgusting. I feel like I'm not even a female, even though I know I'm a woman. So I just hate my body, and the biggest reason for that is all my fault. It's because I'm as big as I am, and it's destroying my life. And living like this is constant misery. It's horrible. And I just wish I could do something to go back in time and change it. But I can't. My life is what it is now. And the past is past, I guess. Whew. I was really young when I started to understand uh, that food this is could story. make me happy. When I was a toddler, my weight was normal. And what it happened? It wasn't until I was around five that my weight gain started. Christmas Eve, right before I turned five years old, we went and stayed with some family for the holidays. And that's when one of them molested me for the first time. After that, my life was never the same. But that was just the start of it, because it lasted until I was 13. I didn't say anything to anybody for a long time. And so every time my mom sent us to their house, it happened to me again. And she sent us to their house a lot because my father wasn't around. So she worked all the time to take care of me and my sisters. Oh my and it got worse when my mom started dating someone after all that started because he was physically abusive to me and my sisters. I have two sisters. And when my mom wasn't around, he would beat all of us. And then his brother would come over and do even worse to us. He would molest me and my sisters. So I lived in constant terror then because I wasn't safe anywhere. So I just tried to escape, and food became that for me. Food made me happy, and when I needed that, I ate. So that's when I really started gaining, and by the time I turned seven, I weighed about 150 to 200 pounds. So I was putting on weight quickly, and that didn't really change. By the time I was 10, I was already up to over 250. So guys, I really don't understand why didn't mom do anything? Did she really saw any change in, your, in her body? But I never really thought it was a big deal until I turned around 11 or 12 years old. Because I started getting bullied at school, you know, pretty heavily. 
so it was miserable. But eating is how I've escaped it all. So from 10 to 13, I put on another 100 pounds. Oh my I goodness. got over 350 pounds by the time I was 13. So how many eat? But the abuse stopped around then because when I was 13 years old, I told mom about the abuse. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't handle it. She didn't really say anything to me to comfort me or anything like that. But she did do something because it all stopped after that. I was still mad at her then because she was the one who let all of that happen. And after that, we exactly. didn't really have a relationship for a long time. But at least she made sure it stopped. So things got a little better through high school. And over the next four years, I put on another 70 pounds and was around 420 pounds when I graduated. Jesus. So I was still gaining, but just not as much as before. After I graduated high school, I was 18 years old and I was afraid of men, you know, afraid of dating men. And to the point where I thought I was gay. And that led me to meeting so now I'm really understand why she found happiness in the eating, but it's not a justification. You know, food, it's not like uh, all in your life. She had to go to the psychologist and say and say about all her problem and solve this problem because this problem is still living in her body, in her brain, in her stomach. There are around of her. A girlfriend at the age of 18. But she had kids, so I had to start working to help out and pay for things. And that was a lot for me. Mm -hmm. And I ate my emotions, I ate my stress. Every time the kids would want to eat, I would eat. And over the next few years, I got over 500 pounds. After college, I went and worked for our local crisis center. And then I went and worked for a company that helps with the developmentally disabled a lot community. Of junk of food. I was still gaining, and eventually my weight really took a toll. And I was unable to really take care of my clients the way they deserved, so I left. I went and worked at a cab company because it was somewhere that didn't require me to be as active. And I did that for around four years. So for a while, I had a lot to focus on in my life, and food wasn't as much of like a constant thing for me. But slowly, my whole life changed, starting with me and my girlfriend breaking up. We were together for 12 years from the time I was 18 till I was 30. Oh. But as time went on, I started to realize that so I sweet. wasn't gay. Ultimately, after many years of contemplation, I did leave. And I got a place with my sister Katie for a while. We lived together with her son, Josh, but mm -hmm. Katie started struggling with drugs. She kept trying to quit for her son, but she relapsed three different times while living. Such a scary story, such a lot of problems in her life, yeah? And she always solves this uh, solution in the eating, but that is cheating part, really. With me, and that was stressful because all the stuff with my sister culminated in me having to take custody of Josh to protect him. So he still lives with me because I won custody of him. And fighting for Josh led me back to using food to cope. So I started gaining a lot again until I met Freeland. When I got with Freeland, she has a little tzus. It kind of slowed down a little bit at first, but I met him a few years ago when I was 32 and still working for the cab company. And Freeland and I did not like each other at first. Mm -hmm. We were yeah. very, very standoffish with one another. He hated me. I hated him. Typical. But we it's just, okay. you know, let bygones be bygones, work together. And somehow in the midst of that, we both fell in love. Mm. I first met Crystal. I was driving for a cab company in Portsmouth. I might get a phone call out of the blue. Somebody telling me they're my new boss. And I just said, oh, I'll take your word for it. Was, I'm up. And it was his Crystal. boy. Boss, sorry. I <laughs> thought she was a horrible boy. person at first. She thought the same about me. But after three or four months of working with her, we just kind of started talking and never really stopped. <laughs> so we got engaged shortly after that, then got married this past year. And it's been me, 
him and Josh living here as a family. And I'm thankful to have both of them in my life because they're what drives me to keep going every day. They give me a reason to be okay, but I'm not okay. I can't even take care of myself now or provide for my family because I had to stop working because I got too big. And Freeland is so great about working and providing and everything, but at the end of the day, he's exhausted. He works 50, 60, 70 hours a week just to get us by. But then I need him to do more to help me do things I should be doing on my own. And I hate it. She always eats. And it's all because I can't give up food. You know, the cravings, they don't go away, so I'm always binge eating. And because of that, my family's life revolves around food, too. The one thing that he always has said is he doesn't care how big I get, he cares about my health. And he was okay with my weight when we got together because it wasn't affecting my health like it is now. Now it's a whole different story. And I you know, the most scary in this situation is that the child can copy her behavior and behavior in eating too. And it's, hate it's horrible. how I'm passing on how I eat to Josh and what I'm doing to myself is starting to affect his health. Because yeah. Josh will eat large amounts of food for somebody his age and size. He'll eat fast and not pay attention. And I know that's because that's how I do it. What he's doing is a learned behavior and he learned it from me, his mom. And I can't live with myself if he ends up like me. So I know that I have to change before that gets any worse before I get any worse, because I hate what I'm doing to my family. And I don't want to be like cheese. this anymore. Grandpa's been in his room for a while. I gotta get him out here for dinner. You want me to go get him? No, uh, he can hear me. Grandpa, dinner's done. I love my granddaughter very much. You know, she eats too much, and I ain't afraid to tell her but you won't list any of them. If you're gonna eat, you're gonna eat any of them, you know. But I don't worry about them losing crystal because if she don't lose weight, she might die. It'd be pretty hard to take, really, you know, being your granddaughter. I hate being as immobile as I am. I want to be able to do more. I want to be able to go more places and do more things. I want to be able to do more around this house. So, guys, all love to eat. Me too. But we all should know about measure. I want to be able to take care of my grandpa. I want to be able to take care of my son, my husband. You know, the way that they deserve to be taken care of. But that's never going to happen if I don't lose weight now. I think I'm ready to confront my demons. I think I really am. Because I've never been more ready to change my life. And I have to change before something bad happens to me. And food costs me everything. It's really dependence. Today we are heading to Houston, Texas for me to see Dr. Now. My Ooh, husband Freeland finally. and my son Joshua are going with me. We're all going to go together to try and get help for me. And I'm excited about that. But I'm not looking forward to the trip because from Ohio to Texas is quite a ways. And it's going to take us like two or three days to get there oh. because we need to break it up so I can really handle a long it. way. Normally, mm -hmm. it's 17 plus hours to drive from Ohio to Houston, Texas. But I know I can't handle being in a car for that long at one time. So we have to do it in stages by breaking it up. I'm going to try to do it in three, five to six hour chunks of time. But even with that, I'm still worried about how my body's going to do being in the car for that long. I know that my legs are going to swell, my feet are going to swell, and I'm just hoping I don't end up in the hospital from overswelling. So that's really a concern for me. 
Hey, babe. Yeah. Freeland. What? Can you come here, please? I need a couple things out of the closet. All right. But I'm actually more nervous to meet the doctor. He's very intimidating. Because he's going to tell me like it is, he's going to tell me where my faults lie, and I know he's going to tell me the truth. And sometimes the truth is hard to swallow. But I'm excited to see him, too, because he's going to change my life. Because I'm not going to be able to give up food on my own. I've tried that, and I've failed. It's, it's too hard to do on my own without any help. It's a big help. problem. I need weight loss surgery. I've been telling everyone what I'm doing, and they've been real supportive. But my mom actually told me she wants to come see me off before I go. And I was a little surprised to have her support like this. Thank you, love you. I think she feels some guilt about my weight gain. I think so. Oh, it's your mother. Because she knows I ate my feelings with everything that happened to me as a child. You know, she's taken some responsibility for that. But I think every time she sees me at the size I am, it's just a reminder of all of that for her. She is also And losing fat. the weight will help both of us in a way because of that. Josh, why don't you go sit in Aunt Tabby's chair so I can sit down? Um, Please. Oh, I'm packed and ready to go. Bell said? Yeah. I'm nervous about you going all that way. <laughs> Even though I've been that far away. I know. I'm more nervous about meeting the doctor than the actual drive. I'm excited for you to meet the doctor. They seem to be the same age. If I didn't know that she is 34 years old, I have never said it. People behind you pushing you. You're going to make it. All right, well, let's go. Oh, I love you. I love you. Be safe. I will. I love you. Love you. Behave yourself. Now they have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me? She ain't gonna let you out without a hug. Oh, no. You gotta take care of my baby girl. Hmm. All right. Baby girl. Uh -huh. I'll walk outside with you. You wanna go out with us? Yep. I know this isn't gonna be easy, but if I succeed, it's gonna be worth it because it's going to change my whole family's life and give me the chance to be all the things I wanted for them. I Here, hope. Take this for me. So I'm hoping this works out like I need because it's the only chance I have to do this. How slowly she goes. I told Freeland I want to try and drive the first part of the trip because I'm hoping having that focus will distract me from how much I'm going to be struggling soon but I'm not sure how long I'm going to be able to last doing this because it's just been a long time since I drove more than five to 10 minutes. And we have five hours to travel today to stay on track. And then I have to do that two more times Which just car? to make it there. And that's a really long time for me to hold out. So really we'll see car? how I handle it because all that's gonna take a toll on my whole body. But this is too important for me to mess up or give up on. So no matter how bad it hurts, I have to keep going to see doctor now. Thankfully, we're getting close to where we're stopping for the night. But I'm very ready to get there so I can rest because all of my joints are killing me and other parts of my body are in a Look lot this. of pain too. I've just been in this car too long because it's been over seven hours. My delivery. Because all the stops to get food slowed us down a little. I think we've stopped around five times to get a meal just because it's gotten harder and harder for me the longer I'm in a car like this. But I've almost made it. I've pushed through, 
but we still have one more day to go. And I'm more sore than I can ever remember being. We're here. So I'm worried about that. Is here? But I just need to get some rest right now. And hopefully that'll help. Yeah, I bet. No, my hips hurt really bad. I've never done a trip like this. So it's just a lot for my body. Not just because of my weight, but my height is an issue. You got it or you need help? I got it. That makes me constantly cramped in Freeland's car. And it's just starting to really wear on me. So guys, you know, now I really had a shock and have. I never have met the people like this one. Yeah, and for me it's unbelievable, really. She's eating now. Too spicy, but they're one not. more time eating. My big fear right now is that I'm gonna wake up tomorrow to find out that the pain is a lot worse. That I'm even sorer than oh, I sell am it. now. Sell so it. that has my anxiety pretty high right now. Oh, you see your chicken? Yeah. This fried chicken. You mustn't eat it. Okay. But I'm just going to try and eat and rest and see how I feel in the morning. But I have to keep going. I have to make it there. I have no choice. So no matter how hard it is for me, I have to keep pushing through it. I'm full. Yeah, if she don't uh, lose her weight, she could date. You save it for later? Yeah, I'll get it. Because making it to Houston is the only option. You know, I need help, and that's the only way I'm going to get it. So no matter what, I'm gonna make it. After eating, go for sleep, it's not the best solution. So she can go run a little bit, yeah, or, or something else, but not just sleeping. I just hope it's not going to be too much harder on my body. I just pity your son. We've made it to Houston and we're almost to Dr. Now's office. I'm sore, but not as much as I worried I'd be. But it took us a little over six hours of driving today, so I'm looking forward to getting out. But I feel like I'm holding up well so far, and especially after three days in a car. Can't believe this is happening. As long as you do everything you tell us, you'll be all right. I told Freeland I drive this last part because I'm trying to distract myself from going to food to keep myself going for now because I don't want to do anything to make my way in worse. You know, if I eat a lot right before I get there, I'm worried it could add on to what the scale says and I just want it to be as low as possible. So I haven't eaten much for the past few hours. Hopefully, that'll make a difference. But I'm starving and that's making me feel a little lightheaded which isn't helping with my nerves. This is just an intimidating process and I'm nervous about meeting Dr. Now and seeing where my weight's at. Hopefully it's not too high and this all goes well. And Dr. Now says he can help me. Nervous. Very nervous. I'm nervous too. Is Daddy? What he is saying for her. I've known I'm over 600 
but I'm just not sure how far over I am now. And my big worry is that I could see something that surprises me on the scale. And that would really be discouraging if that happens. Now we're going to room five. Okay. That's about what I expected. So I'm glad I haven't gained a lot more. But I'm still not happy about that number. It's just not a number that's supposed to be associated with a human. And it's embarrassing that my family sees that and knows that's me. You know, that's how big I am. Because people don't get to this weight. But I'm here to change that. So hopefully, this is the last time I see a scale number that high. And that it just starts going down from here because of the help I get today. I've needed that for a long time and I'm ready to change. I just need to know how to do it and get that push I need from Dr. Now. Hello, how y'all doing? Good, how are you? Okay. I'm Dr. Nazar and you must be Crystal. Yes. And who is with you? Freeland. And you. Good to meet you all. Nice to meet you as well, Dr. Now. All right. Where are you all coming from? Uh, Ohio. Ohio. Where in Ohio? Frankfurt. All right. I'll take you from Ohio to come down to Houston. Uh, it took us two and a half days. Two and a half days? Yes. It was wow. really a big That's quite a time trip. for the street. So what brought you down to Houston? Hopefully you can help me change my life. And how are you going to change your life? Lose weight. So get the bypass surgery. Okay. So you're 34 and 618 pounds? Yes. All right. So what seems to be challenges with your eating habit? I'm a binge eater. Binge eater all day? It, it's an everyday thing. So were you able to motivate yourself and change that? Yes. You think you can do that? I believe I can. It's time for me to take care of me instead of everyone else. It's time for me to focus on me instead of the rest of my family. You know, focus on me and my little my little family here and instead of taking care of everyone else. It's time for me. All right, so on a typical day, just walk me through what you eat and uh, what you do all day. So when you wake up in the morning, what time you wake up? I'll usually wake up about 11, 11.30. 11, 11.30, okay. Yeah, too early. Okay. Take my medicine, drink a couple cans of pop, diet pop. Diet pop? Yes. In the morning? In the morning. Okay. Then I'll find us something for lunch. You fix something or you order something or you... Depends on the day. We've, <laughs> here lately we've been fixing more of our food at home. So if you fix, what do you fix? Ramen noodles, cheeseburgers, sandwiches, like lunch meat All sandwiches, junk chips. Food. Okay. Stuff along that line. Okay. And that's breakfast. Yeah. And then after that, what do you do? Sometimes I'll take a nap or go sit in the front room and watch a movie. You just woke up, you take a nap? Yeah. Okay. And what time do you go to bed? I'm usually in bed by 7, 7.30. So you sleep from 7.30 till 11 o'clock the next day? Mm-hmm. You know how many hours is that? Way too many. You know, the fact that you sleep from 7 o'clock at night till 11 o'clock next day is very abnormal, okay? Mm -hmm. So you should get eight hours of sleep. Okay. Okay? And that's not healthy, but depression may be a factor in that, too, if you're sleeping that much, and we need to address that. I'm in therapy for my binge eating, and I see a psychiatrist for my mental health. So I've been working with them for a while, and it's helped me get quite a bit of it under control. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're doing that, and I'm sure it has been a help to you. But regarding your issues with your eating habit, it doesn't appear that you have anything under control with that. So I'm guessing it has been more of help with other issues. Because with your medical history I'm seeing in your file, you had a lot of anxiety and depression in the past? Yes, I still struggle with anxiety and depression, but it's, it's more under control now than it's ever been. Okay, but I want you to see a psychotherapist before you go back. Is that something you can do? We can't stay here longer. We need to go back. So can I do it with someone in Ohio? 
I want you to do it with someone here, but we'll set up a video call for you. How does that sound? Okay. So we'll set that up and let you know when that will be. So no matter what they do, do you understand this is all up to you? Right. So we stay very focused with your eating habit. And if you do that and stick to the diet, you should easily be able to lose 40 pounds on the next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very easy if you eat three times a day. You can even lose twice as much as that. Okay. But Crystal, what is motivating you to get healthy and change your life right now? I want to live a better life. I want to go back to school and become a nurse. I want to take my son hiking. I want to do more with him. She wasn't yours. I want to be able to see him graduate and just be there for him. Okay. All that is good motivation. So it's you really have to decide if food is worth more to you than those things. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't change, none of that will happen. It's all up to me now. You got it. All right. So we're going to see if we can get you on the right track. This is the um, um, stuff that you're going to read every day. Okay. And then got the list of the food to avoid on the last page. This uh-huh. will give you some information about the obesity and risk factor, understanding of uh, metabolism, and healthy eating habits. So you read this every night. Okay. I think overall, Crystal has not been upfront with me about some things, particularly with the dynamic she has at home, because she's saying her family enables her. But she also said she ordered the food for the whole household, so she seems to be the one in the driver's seat with all that, and probably make the life miserable if they don't go along with what she wants them to bring her and what she tells them. So the family needs to not only learn not to give in to her, but Crystal is the one who is going to determine if that dynamic changes or not. The other things I'm concerned about is some of the mental and psych history I see in her medical history. On top of what it sounds like could be a significant degree of depression she may be struggling with and that's been ongoing for many years. So I want her to talk with Dr. Paradise so he can get some insight to any issues we may need to focus on with her right now. Because depression is normal for someone who is 600 pounds and struggling with life. But if it is severe, then my concern is she may not have the ability to discipline herself for even a month because one or two bad days can lead her so far off the rails that she messes up any progress she has made towards her weight loss goals. So if that's the case with Crystal and what's behind her sleeping more than half the day, then we may be fighting a losing battle with her from the start and things ultimately will go nowhere with her. So it's important we determine that. But we'll see how she does and what Dr. Perta's thoughts are for her. And then determine where we go from there. So let's see how we do in the four weeks. Okay. Any questions? Now, if I do lose the weight that you want or more, will I be eligible for surgery or are you going to? If you lose weight and change your eating habit, then we're going to approve you for weight loss surgery. We're going to proceed with checking your risk factor and see if you're going to be healthy enough to go through operation safely. Okay. And that's going to be what we need to do. But mm-hmm. think of if you're successful, and then you need to think about moving down to Houston uh, if you are serious about losing weight because these two and a half days coming in and two and a half days going back mm-hmm. is going to take toll on your body, and your body is not going to be tolerating that very well. Right. Okay. How many options, right. yeah? We'll see you in four weeks, okay? Okay, sounds good. If you need anything, give me a call. Okay. I hope we'll see you in four weeks and much later. Me too. All right. See you all later. Thank you. So, guys, and what do you think? Will she lose her weight? Mm, probably, yeah. But there is a really big and deep depression inside of her. Mm. And you guys about ready to go? Yes. Oh, I'm stiff. Overall, I think the appointment went well. I think that I can do what he wants me to do. You know, 40 pounds in four weeks is a lot to lose, but I think I can do it. But it's really I a am lot. a little 
shocked that I have to come back so soon. You know, a month and four weeks is not very long, so it makes me a little nervous, especially with how hard this trip is for me to make coming four from weeks Ohio. and 18 kilos. It's gonna take another three days back on top it's of a what lot. it took to get here. So I'm just not looking forward to doing this again. And the other big concern I have is moving down here. I don't know if that's really possible for us, but I'll try to figure it out and see what we can do. But he's a lot nicer than I thought he was gonna be, the doctor. But he's very straightforward and I need that. I need somebody that's gonna tell me like it is and not sugarcoat things for me. So I'm glad to have his help. But to know that I'm the only one that this falls on is a little scary. You know, nobody else has to follow the diet. I'm the one that has to follow it. I'm the one that has to do it. It's a little intimidating. It's a little scary, but I'll go try to do everything he said, even mm -hmm. though it puts a lot on me. Because I know this is my last chance. And if I mess it up, then that's it. There's no plan B. So I'll do all I can, because everything in my life depends on this. So, guys, you know, maybe sometimes it's really so hard to take criticism from people close to you, but if a doctor can help her and she listens uh, to him, that everything in her life will work out. She must follow the rules and the diet. No, sell it. We've been back in Ohio for a few days, and my focus is on doing what I need to get approved this next month. And I'm not just changing my eating habits. I'm also doing all the exercises Dr. Wow. Neil gave me to do. Josh, do you want croutons in your salad tonight? Oh, uh, sure. Especially walking an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. And it's been cool. hard to be active for as long as that, but I've been able to do it. And I've been proud of myself for being able to do that. That's been an adjustment for all of us, but we're all committed to trying to make this work so I can do this. Josh, you want to come eat? Sure. Come on. You can sit by your dad. So I need to talk to you guys about moving to Houston. Mm-hmm. She wants to move. move. She wants to move. Moving to Houston. For the surgery. For... To see the doctor. To be able to maintain a relationship with the doctor and be closer to him. To be under his care. For how long? For here, it's really necessary. Maybe more, maybe less. Just depends. Hmm. I'd like for you to go with me. I definitely want Josh to go with me. But I just, I know that I definitely need to make the move. Because I, it's what's going to be best for me in the long run. I know. But you need to do it. You really want me to? You need this surgery. Right now, our lives are here in Ohio. So I can't see how we'd be able to move to Houston. But I know we just have to figure it out and do whatever it takes. So that's what I'm gonna do. We know it's not going to be easy. But Freeland and Josh are 100% behind me. And I'm committed to doing this. I'm full, so I'm gonna stop eating. Wow, she's full, hmm. Today, I'm doing a video call with a therapist Dr. Now wants me to talk to. But I've been Finally. doing therapy for years to work on a lot of my issues. So, so she really needs 
go to the psychologist because she need to solve this problem. This problem is still living inside her, in her brain, in her mind, in her stomach. Well, it helps, but I'm not sure if any new therapy will make much more of a difference than I've already been doing. But you never know. It will so work. So I have an open mind about it. This therapist could have some new perspectives for me that could help. So I figure exactly. I'll do it and see how it goes. And hopefully that'll be something beneficial to help me with my progress. Hi, Crystal. Hi. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. Tell me about yourself. Okay, so I am 34 years old. I live with my husband, my son. Okay, so what was growing up like for you? It was horrible. I lost my innocence Christmas Eve when I was four years old, right before I turned five. And when you oh, say lost your innocence, meaning you, so were, you were sexually abused at a, as a four-year-old? Yes. Wow. And it continued until I was 13. Somebody in the house? It was oh a cousin my and my mom's boyfriend and his brother. No kidding. Wow. I had a lot of lot of trauma, but um, I didn't tell anyone until I was 13 when my mom finally left her boyfriend. No one knew. Wow. It destroyed my childhood. I, I didn't have a childhood. Yeah. Tell me how this, how your weight plays into all it of this. Destroys I started all. getting bigger when I was about six, seven years old. I started binge eating, sneaking food, hoarding food, because the bigger I got, the less they touched me, and the safer I felt. Right. They're not going to get to me. I got to. I'm building up a protective layer. Right. Exactly. You know, you talk about this with sort of a, a flat expression. I, you're not getting too emotional. And I think you developed a very strong protective coating over you over many years of mistreatment. And I wouldn't be surprised if as you lose the weight, yeah. some of the things that you were protecting are going to come out. Okay. So, Crystal, homework for you is going to involve journaling. And I want you to use that journal as a way to start being a little vulnerable in your writing. Mm. Okay. Because you, you were quiet for so long. You kept so much inside. I, I, you probably have books inside of you of things that didn't get said. So start, start writing it now. Okay. Get, get it out. Okay. Crystal, thank you so much for talking to me. Oh, thank you. Here, have a good night. Bye. Wow, so interesting advice. So guys, and did you write something in your diary? I remember the time when I was younger than now and I really didn't like myself and I wrote about it. I think but that it's was really good. Help. And that Dr. Paradise did have some valuable insight for me to think about and consider. Especially because I only have three weeks to get to my goal. So I'm interested in any ideas that can help me do better to get approved for weight loss surgery. So my focus is on doing everything I need to see all that happen. And hopefully in a few weeks, I'll find out that I made it and that all this really hard work and discipline was enough. After seeing Crystal for her first appointment, I was concerned that she may be suffering from severe depression. And if that's mm -hmm. the case, then we may need to take a different approach with Crystal. Because even something as simple as a short-term weight loss goal may be something that she's not able to do in that stage. 
But now that Dr. Paradise has been able to have a session with Bristol, I'm hoping he was able to get enough insight with her to determine whether or not he believes he's severely depressed to the point where we may need to take a different approach with her to get her on a path she needs. And I also want to know if he thinks there are any other issues we need to address with her to make sure we're not fighting a She's really professional. and setting her up for failure from the start. Hi there, Doctor. Now, hi, Doctor Paradise. How you doing? I'm well. I'm well. I feel like this Doctor I'm doing Paradise. Well, thank you. The it's so reason happy. I'm calling you, I had some concern about Crystal. Okay. My concern is that Crystal is sleeping 15 to 16 hours a day, and Oof. I'm concerned about her emotional state and whether she is severely depressed. Okay. And if she is, then I'm concerned about how that will affect her ability to do the program. So after having a session uh, with her, what are your thoughts about that? I think there's a lot of work to be done with her. She's got a lot of emotional issues behind her pathological eating. I okay. I'm concerned about Crystal's depression, but I don't think she's going to have any issue following your diet and weight loss goals, especially if that's what she wants to do. Well, good. Um, she definitely has some issues that are behind her overeating that we need to work on. All right. Okay. And we need to, to break that cycle where she's sleeping 15 to 16 hours a day to get her motivated to be more active and get her moving on in her life. All right. Well, good. But I don't, I don't have major concerns about issues around self-harm or whether she'll be able to do this or not. Mm -hmm. But if she does get weight loss surgery, I do think with Crystal's history, it will be very important to keep track of her weight loss. Ideally, at least monthly, uh, to make sure that she doesn't fall behind even, even for a month. I don't want her to go back to using food as a coping mechanism. Given her history, she's more at risk for a big slip rather than a small one. So th that's why we need to keep extra close track of her. So it, it would be ideal for her to be down here in Houston so that we can track her closely so that she could be most successful. But aside from that, I, I really don't have any major concerns and I'm, I'm sure she can do this if she wants. The real question is, how serious is she about changing her life? Okay, that's great. I appreciate that. So we're going to start working with her and see what's going on. And I'm going to make sure that she's going to continue coming to see you so she can yeah. work out on all the issues that drive her to eat. And we're going to figure out what to do with her. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you for your help. So, uh, yeah, food is an addiction, but you can handle it. We'll talk to you later. Great. Thanks for checking in, Dr. Now. Bye bye. Uh, Sorry, bye now. Handel. I'm glad to hear that Dr. Paradise doesn't think there is any extreme or severe emotional issues that will prevent Crystal from doing what she needs if she's going to try to make the changes she needs to get healthy and that she can discipline herself for a short period to show us she's truly ready to take responsibility for herself and turn her life around. So where we go from here will come down to how she does when she comes back for her next appointment in a few weeks. She has a very easy goal, and if she hits it, then we can start looking at next steps with her to move ahead. But if not, there'll be no point because there'll be nothing we can do for her that will help long term if she's not committed to doing what she needs like she claims. So this is all up to Crystal and the choices she makes from here. So what happens next is completely in her hands. Yeah, we will see the result. Oh, months, second months. Oh, it is interesting. Right now, I'm headed to a local clinic here in Chillicothe. I was supposed to be going to Houston, but I called Dr. Now and told him I just couldn't do that drive again and asked if there was any other way I could do a checkup for him without mm -hmm. driving there. I feel like I've lost a lot of weight, and that would hopefully mean it would be a little easier for me to drive this time, but I still couldn't put myself through that again. It's such a long time to be in the car, and it takes such a toll on my body. But thankfully, Dr. Now told me I could go to a local clinic and get a weight check here. 
and he said if I hit my goal, the next step would be to move down to Houston if I want to get surgery. But I still don't see how we're going to do that. But all that matters right now is if I got to my goal and if I'm able to get approved for the surgery. For Crystal? Hello. I'm going this way. And I'm really hoping I did because weight loss surgery is the only way I'm going to get my life back. Oh. And that's not going to happen until I hit my goal. So I'm really hoping I did it. And... I'm at a local clinic in Ohio to find out if I hit my weight loss goal or not. And I'm really hoping I've lost enough to hit my goal and get approved for surgery. A month ago, I was at 618 pounds. And Dr. Now told me to lose at least 40 pounds this month. Mm -hmm. So my goal for today is to be at or under 578 pounds. We saw it. And... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Five ninety-one. Twenty-seven. That's progress, but probably not enough for Doctor Now. But I thought it'd be lower than this because I worked so hard to lose this past month. So I don't see how it's not enough. All right, we'll be right with you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm disappointed, really disappointed, because I don't think it's enough. Hi, Krista. How are you? I'm fine. That's good. So, where are you at today? I'm at 591. So, you lost 27 pounds? Yes. Well, that means you're still eating about four to 5,000 calories a day. So, why is that? I, I don't know. I thought I was doing better because I thought I was doing everything you asked me for. You may think that, but you still overeating. How are your portion sizes? Mm -hmm. I thought they were good, but I guess they need to be smaller. That's exactly right. You need to cut back more than you are right now. So you think you can do that? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, I'll do it. Okay, go over to your paper again and follow the amount of it, okay? And if you have any questions, call me. But right now, you're not showing me that you're ready for weight loss surgery, okay? I know. Okay, so this time, I'm going to give you two months to hit the goal of 80 pounds, okay? <laughs> okay. That will give you more time before you have to come back to Houston like you want. But you need to show me that you can fix your eating habits to at least lose that much. You think you can do that? Yes, I can do that. And I will, doctor, now. Okay, then if you do that, then remember, you need to move down to Houston. Have you figured out the options for that yet? We're working on it. Okay. All right, then we'll set your appointment for two months from now. And you need to hit that. So it's definitely so complicated, really. All right, man. And if you need anything, you may call. I will. Thank you, doctor, now. You're welcome. Okay, bye now. Bye. I'm disappointed in myself and a little confused that I haven't made more progress with all I've done. But doctor now has given me another chance, and I'm really thankful for that but it's an even higher number to get to. But I know I have to do it. I have to succeed, so this time I'm gonna try harder and cut back a lot more. Because I'm not losing the opportunity to do this and get my weight loss surgery. Oh, third month. Could she, she change her habits? I mean, about this eating habits? Month, I focused a lot on my portion sizes to do uh -huh. better. I'm definitely sticking to protein and avoiding carbs still. Just trying to eat less of it. This is my favorite deal, fish. 
Can we get Josh time to come eat? So I started measuring things and learning what the proper amounts look like. No, it's not and the that's fish. been a bit eye-opening, I guess. You know, following the amount Dr. Uh, now has no, in no, his no. diet seems really small. But he said that's all you need. So she I'm mustn't trying to stick eat to it. That. Stop! Don't eat! Here. It is fried! That's all I can have now is 400 calories. Yeah. Per meal. It's gonna take a while to get used to it. Even though it feels like it's not enough at times. But I will say that after a couple weeks of eating less, I do think I'm starting to feel full faster. So that's kind of interesting to me. Have you done your exercises for your day yet? No, but I'm going to go for the walk with Josh. That's going to be my morning exercise, and then I'm going to do my nighttime routine. All right. I appreciate that you guys are eating the same stuff, but I don't expect you to eat the same amount as me. Are you done already? Yeah. I'll go check your schoolwork stuff. Let me know what it says. I'm gonna go put the stuff over there. So my life is all about the program and doing all the things I need. And I'm just hoping it pays off a lot better this time so I can get weight loss surgery. Most of my stress right now is worrying about that and mm -hmm. not failing again. And then figuring out how to move to Houston. That has me really stressed too because I don't know how we're going to do that. We're all committed to doing whatever it takes to get me healthy. But Freeland's job is here, and Josh's life is here. My mom is here. So it's just a hard thing for us to try to do. And I'll right now, I don't see how shame. we really can. Unless I go down by myself. So what do you really feel about all this happening? About the move to Texas, how are you feeling about it? You being gone for a year is gonna suck, but... Well, you can always come visit me, and I can come visit you. We're going to go on this walk with Josh, but I'm nervous about it because I don't know how far I'll make it. My back's hurting me pretty bad. You got to push through it. I know, but it's rough. It's so rough. I'm probably going to have to rest before I go on this walk today. I know I can't take a nap because the doctor doesn't want me napping, but I'm going to have to to rest a little bit. Small break will be fine as long as you get back up and keep going. How do you feel about me going to Texas to see Dr. Now? A little worried. It's a long drive. Oh, it's only 18 hours. Just get that over there in front of you, please. That way I don't forget to put it away later. Thank you. It's hard to know that I put myself here where I'm at now and I have to go through such a major surgery to get myself where I need to be. Everything's gonna be fine. Texas is a long... Guys, and do you see that your beard always grows like in a man? Long ways away. So many what ifs, but there's a guarantee that if I don't do this, that I'm not gonna make it. What if everything works out? And then we're going to have a wonderful life. Yeah. Maybe. Everything will be better. But I don't want to leave my family either. So I don't know what to do yet. Nobody said but that it I will be really easy. But I know we have to figure something out. Because I can't give up on getting the surgery. Because if I do, then I won't have much of a life for long. So somehow, I have to work it out. I just don't know how right now. For a while, I think the most I've been active in a day is around 30 minutes or so. And I'm doing four times that now. Wow. But the hardest part, has actually been trying to do all that walking in my house. I don't like to go out. I get worried if I get too far from somewhere, I can sit down, you know, where I know I can rest. But for my exercises today, I'm taking a risk just to try and get out. 
and I asked Josh to go with me to try and walk around the block. I'm a little nervous about it, but I know I won't be far from the house, and I'll have Josh with me if I need help. But I can't keep just walking around inside, yeah, she can going give back activity and forth. With her son. I'm hoping it won't take long to start seeing my stamina increase from doing this. But, but she right gets now, started so it's fast. It's a lot for me. For years, I've just sat on the couch, and that's been my life. And I'm ready to change that. I know this is just going to take time. It's not all going to get better overnight. So I just have to stick with it and push myself like this until it does. Because I am determined to get better. Okay. She gets tired I'm really so myself. fast. That was a good step for me. Not just going outside, but pushing myself to walk like that. But I have a long way to go with my stamina and all my health. But I know the first step is getting to my goals, so I'm not going to slow down for the next... So, you know, guys, I really can't imagine how hard it is. ...next four weeks. Hold on, Josh. Hang on, bud. I'm trying. And hopefully, I'll be able to make a lot of progress by the next month, so I can get the surgery approval, because I'm ready for a new life. It's a great I need it, and I've been waiting too long to do this. So I'm not wasting another second. I'm either going to do this or die trying. Oh, first month. Houston. Now we can we see made the it result. Back to Houston again. The drive was a little easier, so I'm hoping that's a good sign. But it's still tough and hard on me. Crystal? I'm just really nervous about the way in though. I know I worked harder and done everything I can to lose like Dr. Now said. Ah. I've done the diet and the portions and kept up with the exercises. So I'm really trying. But I'm nervous to find out where I'm at and if it was enough. Because of it. So guys, I really hate to get in the scale. You know, I'm always afraid and I always nervous before the getting on the scale. And what about you? If it's not, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have to get weight loss surgery. And I know if I didn't hit my goal, so? then it's not gonna happen. What about result? I'm at Dr. Now's to hopefully find out I've made it to my goal and uh -huh. if I'm getting approved for weight loss surgery. But that all depends on my weigh-in. At my last weight check two months ago, I was down to and? 591. And Dr. Now told me to lose 80 pounds over two months. So that means I need to be at 511 today. 527. Mm. I don't know how to feel about that or what to think. That's a lot of weight to lose, but I'm still not to the goal. So I don't know what that means and what Dr. Now is going to say about it. And I'm really nervous to find out. Hopefully he thinks it's good progress and he's happy with what I've lost so far and that he's not upset because I really want this and I'm trying. How y'all doing? We're fine. Okay, good. Did you all have a good trip down here this time? It was a little easier, I think, this time because of all the weight I've lost, but it was still a hard trip. Well, being in the road for that long is hard for anyone, but I'm glad it was a little bit easier. And I think you're probably right about your weight loss helping with that, because overall now you lost 91 pounds. So that's good. Do you feel a big difference in your day to day with that? Yeah, I'm able to get around easier and I can walk for longer before I get tired. Yoo so I'm definitely noticing a difference in what I can do and all that. That's good. I'm glad to see all your progress. You didn't make it to 80 pound gold, but you're losing more per month this time. And in total, you're getting close to losing 100 pounds. 
So you've been sticking with it for a few months. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve you for weight loss surgery. That sounds Yahoo! good? That's amazing. Okay. I'm so proud Before we do that, you need to move down here to Houston. Are you ready to do that? Yes. My husband is staying behind to continue to pay for our home back in Ohio. And me and my son are moving down here. And my mother is paying for us to stay down here in Houston so that I can get the surgery. Okay, that will work. So let me know as soon as you move down here, okay? Okay. How long until you can do that? Um, we think we can do it in the next month or two at the most. Okay, that's good. Let me know when you're down here, and depending on how long it takes, once you move, then we'll set another appointment to make sure that you stay on track. Okay. And if you have, then we'll set you for surgery. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, doctor, now. Uh, you're welcome. She no looks really happy. Right okay? I will. Stay focused, and if you need anything, give me a call. And I hope I'll see you soon. Okay, doctor, now I will. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, y'all take care. You too. What do you think? I'm excited. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. Well, it's a good bit of weight today, huh? Mm-hmm. What do you think, Josh? You ready to move down here? It's going to be a whole new adventure. A whole new adventure for all of us. I'm proud of Crystal, and I'm happy to see she improved her progress and applied herself more over the last couple of months. So I feel like she's ready to take the next step to get weight loss surgery. And as long as she stays on track and continues losing, once she moves down here, we will move ahead with her. But it's going to be very important she does a lot of psychotherapy and sticks with that because her emotional issues are playing a very significant role in her pathological eating. So we are going to need to address that for her to be successful in the long term. So weight loss surgery is a good next step for her. But we still have a lot of work to do with her to get her to where she needs to be. But right now, her focus needs to be on moving down here to Houston and not getting off track with her weight loss during that time if she wants to move ahead with her weight loss surgery. I was really nervous before the appointment because I didn't know which way it was going to go. But I'm really happy and excited that I got my approval for weight loss surgery because that's going to be hard for me. But we work to figure I'm out really an happy option to that hear, will you know? allow me to keep moving forward and do this so I can get healthy and have a life with my family. So I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm ready to do whatever it takes to do this. And hopefully soon, I'll be down here in Houston and getting my weight loss surgery. Now, oh, 11 months. It'll be so interesting, seven months he passed. Mm-hmm. when it was going. Babe, I need the suitcase brought in here real quick. It's right there in the living room. And that book bag, our carry-on. It's been a really hard time. I really don't even know exactly how long it's been since I got approved for surgery. But it's been a while, and it's just been really hard. This stuff goes in the book bag, and I'll put this stuff in the suitcase. Around a month and a half or two months after I saw Dr. Now, I was ready to move to Houston. But then with everything having to shut down, I just had to be here and wait. And it's just been a while to keep doing the diet and everything on top of it being an emotional time. And it's just been a struggle but I haven't stopped trying. I've been able to talk to Dr. Paradise when it's gotten really bad, and I've had my own therapist to talk to, too. But this just hasn't been easy. And right now, I don't know where my weight's at, but I'm gonna find out soon. I'm heading out, Mom. Right now, we're preparing to go back to Dr. Now, and I'm nervous. 
I'm nervous about finding out where my progress is at and about taking this trip and how it's going to go. I can't do the drive again. It's too hard. And so we're going to fly. But I haven't been on a plane in like maybe 20 years. Don't worry about the plane ride. You're going to be fine. Oh, easier said than done. Mm-hmm. So I have no idea if I'm going to be able to handle it at my size. And that's what has me scared. But I've been waiting for months to get back on the program to try and finally get surgery. And now that I can finally go back to doctor now, I just need to find out where things are at for me and how I can get back to it all and get my weight loss surgery. Hopefully it'll be soon, but I don't know. I just have no idea how this is gonna go, but it's probably all gonna come down to where my weight's at. But soon we can see the result. I'm just hoping that I've at least been able to stay the course and that everything that happened recently hasn't messed up my chances for weight loss surgery. If that happens, it's going to be really, really discouraging and depressing. But I'm trying to stay positive and hoping that I'm still in the range I was at and that doctor now thinks wherever I'm at is good enough to get back on the schedule for surgery once I move down. All About will be okay. It's a whole other thing because we lost the place I was going to move to since I didn't move down. Hello. Um, we're going to the airport. So we'll have to figure all that out again and see what options I have but I'm still just as dedicated to doing whatever it takes to move ahead and get surgery. Is everyone ready? Yep. Yeah. But I think that it's all going to come down to where my weight's at. So I'm just hoping that I can make this trip and that when I get there, I get good news and that things aren't going to be messed up. But I have no idea what's going to happen now or what my options are. Me too. And I'm scared to find out. Me, Freelan, and Josh are headed to the airport to go to Houston to see Dr. Now. But the drive mm-hmm. to get here has been a couple of hours, so I'm already feeling sore. And that's making me worry about everything right now. So I don't know what to expect, and I'm just nervous about how this is going to go. I'd almost lost 100 pounds and was making some progress. But after being indoors for like seven months, I struggled to keep doing everything I needed at times. I'm not sure if I'm still around my last weight or if I gained some. But what has me worried is I don't feel like I have that bit of extra energy I had when I first lost the weight. Uh, hello, it's Nita Nightbeam. Here's your boarding passes. You'll be able to gate B29. So right around this corner and then down through security. Yep. It's been 20 years since I've been on a plane. I just know the seats are usually small and cramped. And how it will be for her? Electric cord to D2, please. Electric cord to Delta 2, please. So my worry is that it's going to be too much for me at some point. Oh. Y'all sure I'm not going to flip this thing? And what it's going to be like to be on a plane at my size. Oh. Everybody is staring. I'm like a freak show. I don't like this. It's part of having a big mom, buddy. I'm sorry. I never wanted you to be embarrassed like this. Just put your mask over your face. Did you pay me for this music? I make it from my mind. From the memory. so humiliating. Yeah. But I'm pushing past all my concern and fear. 
because I really want to get back to Dr. Now. Hello. Thank you. And get weight loss surgery soon. I'm just worried about getting on the plane and if it's going to be too tight of a fit for me. I'm winded, but I'm holding up okay. This isn't as bad as I thought it could be. It's tight, but I think I can manage. Uh -huh, she needs to it's sit. like a three or four hour flight. So I'm just going to try and take it easy and rest <laughs> until I get there. We're landing soon, and I'm feeling okay, but I'm ready to get off. For your safety and safety folks around you, put your seatbelt securely fastened. And your carry-on item step on the aircraft as part of the game. The captain has carried off the seatbelt sign. I'm proud of myself for doing this. You know, being around so all these empty, people uh, and walking as much as I have a year ago would have terrified me. So it feels good to have done this. I wish we could go rest some at the hotel, but my appointment with Dr. Now is in an hour and a half, but we're just gonna head straight there. I just hope I haven't taken any big steps back and that I'm still gonna be able to get my weight loss surgery. We will because see. it feels like I've been waiting forever. I was so close to finally get the surgery to help me change my life. And then it was all just stopped and put on pause. And I feel like I don't have a lot of time to wait around. So I'm just hoping I don't get any bad news. Crystal? Hello. Well, time I am the I'm getting of really your... nervous about getting on the scale. So? Part of me really wants to know where I'm at, and part of me doesn't. Because I'm scared of what it's going to mean if I gained anything. I worked so hard to get approved for surgery, and I just don't want to lose it. But I know if the number that comes up on the scale is higher than it was, then it's probably not going to be good. I'm at Dr. Now's clinic again after seven mm -hmm. months of having to wait. I was down to 527 last time, and I'm here to see if I maintain that or not. And? Because I know the only way Dr. Now will let me move ahead with weight loss surgery again is if I stayed on track. But it's been hard, so I don't know what kind of number is going to come up. That's disappointing. Oh, it's shit. what I was afraid of because I know I struggled. I was just hoping it wasn't that much. That I said before, guys, I really think that she needs to go to the psychologist and talk about her pain, uh, all pain that lived inside her. And I'm scared because I don't know what Dr. Now is going to say. He will be happy, of course. But it's probably not going to be what I was hoping for today. Hello, how y'all doing? We're okay. All right, good to see you all again. It's been a while. Good to see you too, Doc. Have y'all been holding up okay? It's been hard, but we're doing okay. I did struggle with the diet some, but I didn't stop trying the whole time. 
I know it's been a hard time, so that's understandable. But it looks like you gained more than half the weight you lost back. So it looks like you went back to coping with food again. And when I talked to you, I warned you that no matter how hard it gets, you need to stay on track or we won't She's move really ahead so with your weight loss surgery. I know it's just been a whole lot longer for me to try and do this on my own. I understand that, but you said gaining, so that's the issue. <laughs> so I'm still able to get weight loss surgery? Not while you're gaining. I told you that. But this is what we can do. You have shown me you can do this once, so I'm confident you can do it again. So make plans to move to Houston and come down here. And if you do that, we'll check your weight then. And if you lost the weight you gained again, I want to approve you for weight loss surgery again. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Doctor Now. So you think you can move down here? Yes, we had a place here for me. And we'll see if I can get an apartment there again and move down. So my husband is staying home to pay the bills back there to keep our home in Ohio. And me and my son are moving down to Houston and my mom is paying for us to live down here. And she will be here with me while I have the surgery and my recovery after for a couple weeks. Okay. But if you take a lot longer to do that, then that's not gonna work. So make sure you do that uh, within the next few months, you understand? Yes, and I'll, I'll move down here as soon as I can. Okay. Before you go back tomorrow, I want to run some tests on you to make sure there are no new issues with you that we need to address. So we'll set that up for you and let you know where to go for that. And then after that, I'll see you when you move down here, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, I hope to see you all again soon. Let me know if you need anything before then and stay safe. We will. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Bye now. Oh. It's unfortunate that Crystal has gained over 50 pounds since the last time she was here. It's understandable that she struggled during this time. It's an emotional time for a lot of people, but the fact remains that her weight has to be going down for her to get weight loss surgery. So it's concerning to see the weight gain she had. But with what I've seen from her, I have confidence she's going to get back on track here soon. Once she does that and moves down to Houston, we'll be able to move ahead and do weight loss surgery on Crystal. Hopefully that will happen soon. But even when we do, this will only be the first big step for her because she still has a long way to go and a lot of work to do to get to where she needs. But if she applies herself and gets back on track, I think we can get her to her goal weight within the next year, pending any outside circumstances. So we'll see how she does in a few months. So she can ignore reality, but she can't ignore the consequences of reality because otherwise she may die or or live, but not as such a short period of life. That when I saw my current weight, and I got scared about what Doctor Now was going to tell me, but I can do what he's asking. I can move down here and lose the weight I've gained by then. It was just hard feeling like I was going nowhere for so long. But things are back on track. And I'm excited about that. So I'm going to work hard. And whatever I need to make happen to keep moving forward and get surgery, I will. Mm-hmm. Well, smiles. Mm-hmm. That as well. I found a place in Houston that's in the same complex I was going to move to before. And I'll be able to move into it next month. So I'm getting prepared for that and working hard to lose as much as I can by then. I went to the local clinic to get my current weight and I've lost 24 pounds. So I have to lose 38 more to hit Dr. Now's goal. And I'm working hard to do that in a month with the timeline that he gave me. But it's not easy getting back on the diet and being strict with it again. 
especially with all the stress of trying to move and leaving my family. Just the thought of being apart from them for any chunk of time is upsetting. But this is the only way, even if it means we have to be apart for a while. Doctor now told me that if I work hard, I could get to my goal in the next year. And I'm gonna give it my all to do that. So I'm working to manage my portions again, and I'm back to exercising every day. So Josh and I have been going places like parks or trails to spend time together while I get my exercise in. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to spend as much time with him as I can before moving to Houston. And it's the same with me and Freeland. I just want to spend as much She's time crying. with them as possible because being apart from them is going to be one of the most hardest things I've ever done. Where do you want it? On the bed. You're gonna have to help me unzip it. Okay. On that side. So when the husband stayed here, yeah? Stays here. Oh. I don't know how I'm gonna do this without you. You can do it, you're gonna be fine. You can call me every day. And I'll yeah. come visit you every chance I get. But by he doing this, here. it's going to allow me to have a future with them that I wasn't gonna have. And that's my biggest motivation to do this. Because I know if I succeed, then everything I ever wanted to do as a mom and a wife will be possible. I'll never get to that life, to those possibilities, if I keep justifying what I've been doing. No. So I'm more determined than ever. More determined than when I started this. And I feel like I'm more motivated than ever because I've seen a little bit of what I'm capable of and gotten a small taste of how life can get better for me and all of us if I keep making progress. So I'm not slowing down or getting off track again. I'm staying focused on what's ahead and all the possibilities that will be there for me if I stay the course. So like a guiding light, I'm envisioning the life I want with my family and for myself if I succeed to make sure I get there no matter what it takes. And I can't wait for that. So guys, it is the end of the story. I have really pity for her. She has ton of injuries, both emotional and physical, but I want uh, her to succeed. She is really so strong and she can do it because otherwise it might end badly for her. Guys, I really thankful for your attention i will be really very grateful for your likes and i hope you enjoy this episode so don't forget to write your comments and see you shortly bye